So Martin Perkins is next to so join me to look back on how things have gone over the last year. And looking at year two, I suddenly realise there's an awful lot of things that we're going to have to repeat again this year. You can't be happy that so many things have got logged jammed. I'm thinking about gas, first of all. The big yeah. gas report that you were involved in. Yeah, I mean, I am disappointed, not, not just on gas, Paul. There's, there's a lot of other stuff that has been put on the back burner because of Brexit. And that's not an excuse. That's how it's been uh, with the drafting people. Oh, okay, so let's, let's, let's deal with this. You, yeah. you cannot get the legislation through your end because they're too busy with other things. Still. There's stuff queuing up that should yeah. have perhaps been looked at this year. And my particular uh, disappointment is the fact I didn't get the opt-out organ donation uh, bill through. Uh, and that will now go into next term in the second sitting of the Keys. Can you remind us what that was about? Well, the opt-out is bringing us in line now with England have now gone down this route. So we're now behind? We're now behind. Right. And if, if you really don't want your organs to be donated, you opt-out. And when we were talking about this originally, we were behind Wales only. Or yeah, so Wales, was yeah Wales went first and then we, f we were trying to follow. This but, isn't yeah. good then? I mean, you must be frustrated. Very frustrated, yeah. Um, having said that, there has been a bit of a silver lining because when England brought their legislation in, there were slight differences that they didn't have at the outset that they put in, and we've managed to incorporate those now. This is copy and pasting, basically, legislation? Uh, it's bringing us in line so that it's a seamless transition from a donation in the Isle of Man to be allowed to be accepted in, into the UK. Any ideas if that will say year four and we'll still have the same conversation? I jolly well hope not. I, I'm absolutely... But, uh, yeah. but, you know, committed to try and getting it through next year. And, you know, I, I feel very sorry for Diane Taylor and the um, Plan Scrunt committee at the, uh, the hospital because I was desperate to get it through this last year. But it, it's just hit the buffers. But it's, it's there now and uh, it will be in the second sitting of, of uh, the Keys. How much reaction has there been to it? Do you think it's mostly positive? I mean, oh, yeah, very positive. I mean, I've, so it's something that yeah. should just happen almost. Like. It should almost just happen. You get the odd one or two naysayers, as in all things, Paul, sure. but uh, it very, it's very positively received. Can we go back to gas? Because yep. I'm puzzled that this is still sitting around. You, mm. uh, and update me, please, because I don't know where we are. There were two different reports being done. You, uh, OFT for you, which is your thing, and then there was mm. the, the sort of chief minister's one as well. Yep. Is that still the well, situation? Well, the Chief Minister's one is taking preference, and Chris Thomas is driving that through, and I can't do anything at the OFT until that is all Is there no point, complete. is there any point in you doing it was then? I mean, surely... Oh, we're, not, we're not doing another report. We're keeping a very close eye on what Manx Gas oh, are okay. doing. I thought it was these two yeah. reports. You, no, no, no. We, 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 um, the, the Chief Minister decided he wanted his own committee to look into it and come up with a... Oh, so you stopped that stage? Yeah, yeah, we have to stop that. Right. Um, and then once that's sorted, then we will press the button, or it can be Comin, or it can be um, DFE. Those are one of the three people that can press the button to renegotiate a new uh, deal. And that's what it's about? And at the moment, Finding out what the new deal should well, be, uh, if there I, is one. And I think they are negotiating, but um, watch this space. And I'm going to repeat, will that say year four for this? Yeah. Yeah, well, I hope not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not good. Yeah. I'm not well, saying we, it's you, we, though. I'm just, you know, just know, it's well, we've also got the state agents bill and we've got the competition bill all queuing up. So when we get back in uh, October, we're going to be very, very busy people. How are you feeling about last year? Let's deal with that. My glass is always half full, Paul, as you probably know. Yeah. Um, but I am a bit, wee bit disappointed that uh, Brexit has overtaken everything. And it seems to... Uh, and it's still going on, of course. And, and then, of course, Brexit's been put back and put back. So, yeah, it's been a very frustrating year, really. Well, your other work... You, just remind everyone what you're on still. Which, which departments? Uh, I'm in DEFA. And, of course, one of the big things in DEFA now is the climate change um, right. legislation and what, what we're going to do about that. We have been working on it, but with Professor Curran now coming on board, that's given it a real shot in the arm. And, uh, you know, I think uh, we've got a really good opportunity here to introduce some very good measures and do our bit. You know, I, I don't think we should be out there um, whipping ourselves and, you know, hurting ourselves because we need to be market leaders. But we, we should be doing our fair amount uh, towards climate change. Because you have responsibility for the environment, I think, isn't it? Well, Is that, I was labelled, I think, it, by the uh, or... Uh, yeah, not totally. I mean, Single-use plastics, I think, is the one. But, oh, OK. But everybody in DEFA is responsible for the environment. And, and I think even, you know, going right to every civil servant, we all care deeply about the environment. That's why we work in DEFA. And... Uh, my one concern about all the climate change stuff is we have to make sure that middle to low income families don't cop unfairly mm -hmm. the, the, the burden of having to, to sort ourselves out for climate change. 
Um, what ideas have you got on this? Uh, well, bring to the table yourself. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm convinced that uh, we should go ahead with the gas um, exploration, and if we do find gas, the money should be ring fenced to be completely put towards climate change mitigation. So therefore, any money that does come back from any gas we find uh, will help uh, the island convert to renewable energy. Sort of offsetting your carbon on that one, are yeah, you? Yeah, you know, and it's, it's, it's being pragmatic. Um, no wind farms, no nothing like that? You, you yeah, well, I don't think we, we need to go down wind farm. Oh, definitely. And, and that, okay. this is what it will pay for. And also, I mean, you know, low to middle uh, to low income mm. families, they've got the old cars and they can't afford to go out and buy an electric car at 30 grand. No. Um, they can't afford to insulate their house any better because this is, this is one of the basic, two basic things that will help with climate change. But you've been offering uh, all sorts of grants, haven't you, for getting we do insulation? Have, and we do have grants, but I think we're just playing with it. We need to make sure that uh, if old cars have to be taken off the road, there's a very good scrappage allowance uh, for people to buy new cars. We should be encouraging uh, people to use the buses more. Um, there's an argument for... Free buses? That came up recently. What's your thought on that? Well, not, for every, not for everybody, but for yeah. low, low income families, yeah. I've not so got means testing it? Yeah, I think so. Um, we, we, uh, there's other things that we can do, and, and I'm a big one for car sharing. You know, you sit at Signpost Corner in the morning and you see all the cars coming in from Ramsey, and they've got one person in them. Mm -hmm. Now, immediately, if you share a car, you half your costs of getting to work, you reduce your carbon footprint, and you save the roads. You could put them on the bus, though, couldn't you? Make it, well, you could, you could make it even better on the bus, yeah, absolutely. You um, were pushing the refill of water thing. Oh, yes. And we yeah, yeah. Had yeah, what happened to that? We, we, we sat did, around for a long time. Yeah, I we did 100, yeah. Okay. 100, that was way back in May. Oh, it was Brexit that slowed you down. I held it, yeah. it back. It was for a rainy day <laughs> yeah. when the water was running dry on me. But seriously, uh, how are you doing on that? For yeah, I mean, the 100th one was at the Aviation Museum and uh, it's gone on since then. I'm not sure exactly how many we've got. But and the schools... Being, I mean, you weren't coming up with that idea. That seemed obvious that the schools wanted to sort of get out of having water by the bottle and having fountains. Yep. Were you driving that in any way? Or? No, the schools actually came up with that yeah. to do their part. And I, I, we didn't realise that the schools were selling so much bottled water. Um, but yeah, it's, it's resolving itself. These things do take time. And uh, the public have got the imagination now. And, you know, the, the um, Royal Show, there was a place to fill up your you mm -hmm. know, water. And it's, it's really got going, I think. <laughs>